honest with you, I remember barely nothing about Murder on the Orient Express, which is kind of shocking to me because I'm a big fan of murder mysteries, and heck, even the Doctor Who episode Mummy on the Orient Express, I remember that a lot more than Murder on the Orient Express. Now, that's not to say that it's bad or anything. I can't tell you if it's good or bad because I barely remember it, but I do kind of remember that it was a little bit lackluster, kind of forgettable, you know, some good visuals here, some good mystery elements there, uh, but overall, I've seen better murder mysteries. Uh, so I was a little bit hesitant when it came down to Death on the Nile. But the fact that I wasn't that, you know, familiar with the story did kind of intrigue me a little bit. And to be honest, it's probably a better movie overall. So let's get cracking. Death on the Nile ultimately takes place on kind of a boat in Egypt on the Nile, where our famous French detective Poirot tags along on a little bit of a journey of sorts where he discovers yet another murder that happens on this boat. And as all good murder mystery detective stories go, he must go around interviewing everybody that he runs into, trying to figure out who did this atrocious murder and why. So I actually think that this is definitely better than Murder on the Orient Express. Even though I don't remember that movie as much as I probably should, I think that this comes off as more memorable for a variety of different reasons. First of all, this movie is beautiful. The cinematography alone is worth the watch. The pyramids, the sphinx, the various landscapes of Egypt really make this film pop in a lot of different ways. Honestly, I could turn this movie on, mute it, and just watch it as a, as a background thing because it really is pretty to say the least. Second of all, the mystery beyond this film is not bad at all. I've, I was a little bit hesitant on that as well because when it came down to other reviews that I've read and what I've watched for this movie is that it was predictable, that people figured out who the murderer was long before the murderer even happened. I don't actually agree with that. I think that this film is filled to the brim with red herrings. I, I think that it's filled to the brim with suspects. So in general, everybody looks guilty and as an audience member, you're watching, you're thinking, well, if this person killed them, this is why. Or if this person killed them, this is how they did it. And sure, one of the suspects is definitely the killer. And if you're trying to put it together in your head, you probably will. But you probably will in the same way that Poirot does in the film. So all these different people do look guilty, and they all could potentially be the killer in question. So I wasn't that angry at the film for being p potentially predictable, because to me it wasn't. I wouldn't have been shocked if this person killed them, or this person did, or whoever did. So I was worried that it was going to point its finger at one person and one person alone, and that person ended up being the killer. That's not the case. Everybody gets their finger pointed at, essentially. The performances were all well done. The uh, the editing was all well done. Uh, one complaint that I've seen a lot of people talk about, and I will as well, is the pacing. You know, uh, it takes literally half of the movie to get to the actual murder. So half of the movie is the introduction, and the middle point of the movie that's when the inciting incident happens. That's when the call to action happens. Unfortunately that throws you off balance a little bit, right? Because as an audience member, you might be thinking to yourself, is anything going to happen in this movie or are we just going to look at a lot of beautiful landscapes of Egypt? But once the halfway point occurs, the rest of the movie is really exciting. It's a really good mystery. It's really well done. The only problem I have with that is it had so much time for the introduction and not as much time for the mystery itself to be conducted. So a lot of that felt rushed actually because the movie's two hours. So an hour of introduction, an hour of mystery solving stuff. It's good, no doubt about it in my mind, but it's also not as good as it could have been if they really dive deep into the mystery. In general, I would say that I was definitely engaged with the film. You know, I didn't want to look away. I felt that if I did look away, that I might miss something incredibly important. There's a lot of moving parts, as there should be with any good murder mystery, and uh, everything is connected in a way. So if you look away and you miss these things, it won't make a lot of sense to you. So make sure that if you're watching it, pay attention the whole time, because when they connect the dots at the end, at that end denouement, if you will, it'll be more worthwhile to you. You know, it'll mean more. 
But yeah, I had fun with this movie. Again, I have seen better or more exciting murder mysteries out there, but there's a classic feel to this film, right? You watch it and it doesn't feel like it came out in 2022. It feels like it was made maybe in the 60s, you know, in the 70s. There's a, there's a classic physical film feel to this movie. So let's go ahead and break down my final score for a second. So from a technical, unbiased perspective, I think that the movie in general was well done. I think in general, I will be remembering it for the way that it was made. There are certain things here and there with visuals that kind of looked too crisp and too vibrant and too clean to feel realistic, but there's not too many of those to be completely distracting. A majority of the film does look very well done, does look like the cinematography was expertly planned out and executed. The mystery at the heart of the film, I thought, was very well done. I, I Sure, some people consider it to be predictable. I didn't really because I think because they pointed their finger at literally everybody on this boat, it stayed mysterious enough so that when the end denouement happened, you're still pleasantly surprised. The pacing itself, not as good as it could have been. Like I said, an hour of introduction, an hour of everything else. It's just not as balanced as it should be. So this unbiased score is 84%. My bias score, just kind of how I felt about it overall, you know, I enjoyed it, absolutely. I, again, it's not the best murder mystery that I've seen in my entire life, though it was a good experience. I did like these people. I liked the performances. I liked the visuals. I liked all this. I was having a good time with it. I didn't want to turn it off. I didn't want to look away. So in general, I was engaged. It's certainly a better movie than the original, and I wouldn't be against watching a third movie in this series. I don't know if they will make a third. Maybe they will, maybe they won't. But if they do, I wouldn't complain in the least. But my bias score is 80%, meaning that when we combine the two scores together, we come to the final rating of 82%, 82 out of 100 possible stars. Now guys, have you seen Death on the Nile? If you have, let me know your thoughts about it in the comment section down below. And as for YouTube, you guys know what to do. Hit the like, subscribe button, and a bell to be notified when I come up with my next review. And until then, peace out.